Well, the Bible says, give order for those who deal for order. Today, before I bring the message, I think that, you know, I want to give all the order to God. Yes. Last year was a very trying year for me. Uh, in April, I was diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. They found a tumor in my pancreas. And uh, it's at third stage, very aggressive. And so they say, I got to go to chemo straight away. So I went for the uh, chemo, and each round is like 52 hours. So if I Monday I go for chemo, it's up to Wednesday. But praise the Lord. You know, God is amazing. I go eight cycle. Every cycle, there's no side effect. And because when I went in, I have a preaching on the Pentecost Sunday at Paliba Methodist Church. And so uh, I tried to call the pastor, but the Holy Spirit just stopped me. And so I told God, I said, God, if you want me to speak, then I cannot have any side effect. And true enough, no side effect. And the pastor was so gracious. The pastor said, don't worry. I give you up to Thursday. If you still feel good to come, you come and share. And so I went to share, and that sermon went viral. And so uh, that's what happened. And God is good, and uh, even I went to Bado, Tampanese, and the first service was Saturday, second ser Sunday got second, third service. And the second service, before I share my testimony, before the altar call, people from the second floor start walking down, and they just cry. The power of the Spirit of God is there. It's not how good we are. It's not how much we can do for God. It's how much we are willing to surrender and yeah. obey God. Yeah. And when we obey the Word of God, God is able to do amazing things. But uh, in October, after the eighth cycle, I went for my operation to take out my pancreas. And it was a 15 hours operation and you see I was shocked when I see my wound I said what happened man? right now I don't have my uh, uh, gallbladder I have only part of my small intestine half of stomach no appendix and so my digestive system right now I only have a stomach liver and the last intestine and by the grace of God, I'm able to come here to share the word of God. And so, the doctor said that, you know, even though the, the operation is successful, 20% live more than three years. And so he will try. By the way, this doctor, right, he's a Christian, but he never acknowledged he's a Christian. Until my... Six times of chemo, I keep sharing with him about how good our God is. And he began to see that, wow, after seven, six rounds, you still look so good. And he began to tell me, I'm a Christian. <laughs> and so he was trying to be nice. He said that, you know, the operation, maybe right now is successful. It can increase to 30%. I said, doctor, you and I, we are Christian. My life is not... You know, according to the statistic or according to what doctors say. Yes. What they say is the fact. My life is in the hands of God. Yes. I say I don't need to increase the percentage. I only need one person and that's my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so he say, wow, you know, I, he said I don't have any, you know, I'm really very amazed of what God is doing in your life. Yes. And so life is not about how long we live. It's about how well we live for the purpose and the will of God. And that video went viral and I, and I've learned in this life, it's not, life on this earth is not for us to build, to stay. Because even if I have all this sickness, if you don't have, or you may, may have other problems, but all of us will face death face to face one day. And so life is for us to build and to prepare for eternity. And so I hope that all of you, 
when I go through the 17 days after the operation, it is your relationship with God. Christianity is not about just attending Bible, study, coming to church. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. You've got to build that close relationship with God. So that in times of trouble, in times of difficulties, the peace of God that transcends all understanding can guide your mind and your heart to go through. That even you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you fear nothing. You fear nothing. Because you know that God is with you. Amen. Let's give all the glory to the Lord. Amen. Once again, I want to thank your pastor. Pastor, you see, right now, uh, it's not stuck right there. My voice is very strong, right? Uh, okay, uh, I want to thank Pastor Joshua and uh, Pastor Lawrence and the rest of the leaders. Wow, through the operation, I lost 21 kg. So that's why you see I'm very skinny. But physically, I'm skinny, but inside me, if you have God, nothing can stop you. Because the Spirit of God is able to give you the anointing to break the yoke of your body. So today we are here to celebrate uh, Good Friday. Last week I was preaching uh, in this tabernacle of Christ. Uh, Palm Sunday, we all know that is a triumphant entry of Jesus. That Jesus was riding on the donkey into Jerusalem. In Luke chapter 19, Jesus asked his disciples, you go to the other village, and there will be a donkey. And so she'll show something that, you know, sometimes what God can see, we cannot see. Because God is eternal. And God is able, and God knows everything. And so he asked the disciples to untie the donkey and bring the donkey to him. Is it because Jesus walked to uh, 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 too long already that Jesus is tired and asked them to bring a donkey so they can ride on the donkey. No. Every step of Jesus' life is to fulfill the scripture. Right. Is to fulfill the prophecy. Mm. And so he's prophesied in Zechariah that, you know, see your king come to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on the donkey. It's not Jesus is tired. Jesus' life is about fulfilling the scripture. And Jesus himself said that, I will only do what I see my father do. I will only do what I hear from my father. That's the life that Jesus lived on this earth. That he come to fulfill whatever purpose and the scripture that God talked about. And that is where Palm Sunday is a triumphant entry. And the people thought that, wow, Jesus is here. Our king is here. He's going to come and destroy the Roman Empire. He's going to come and kill and destroy all the soldiers, Roman soldiers. No. They have a very wrong perspective. Jesus entering into Jerusalem is not to kill, it's to save. Yes. But it's to kill himself, lay down his life at the cross so that you and I can be saved. And that is where, when we come to Palm Sunday, and the next, the week towards Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday towards Good Friday, the Catholic call is a holy week. And some of us Christians also believe it's a holy week. And so the next day, we know Jesus went to the temple. Jesus upside down, you know, turned the table upside down because of the people doing business at the temple. No, Jesus is not against people doing business. It's the way they do business. They cheated the people, they oppressed the, the poor. And Jesus said, my father's house is a house of prayer. But you're turned into a den of robbers. And from that day when Jesus cleansed the temple, the lame, the blind come, they received healing. Second day, Jesus went to the religious uh, Leaders and they talk, and Jesus tried to tell them about the truth. The third day, Jesus gathered the disciples at the upper room and teach them about the importance of Holy Communion. 
And Jesus washes, wash their feet to teach them about humility. The ways of God is not climbing up. The ways of God is humbling yourself so that God can lift us up. And then on Thursday, Wednesday, Jesus prepared the disciple. On Thursday, Jesus prepared himself. Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus prayed to the Father, Father, is it possible that you take this cup away? Let it be your will and not my will. Jesus knows that he's going to face a horrible, a terrible death. He prepared himself. And after the prayer, God sent angels to comfort him. And he prepared himself. And he come to Good Friday, the day that we are talking about today, Good Friday. And so, in English, we call Good Friday. In Chinese, so nan jie. The day of suffering. How can be a day, the day of suffering, the Son of God suffered a horrible death and it can be called Good Friday. Very contradicting. But if you have the right perspective, then we can say the day of suffering is Good Friday. Because we know the reason why Jesus has to suffer. And that is where I entitled my message, why Jesus need to die. And on Sunday, when I come back, I titled my message, Why Are You Weeping? And so then we can have the right perspective about Good Friday and about Easter Sunday. So that we can, you know, have a better understanding, the right understanding, that the truth will be able to set us free to live a victorious life. So you see, when Jesus was suffering, terrible. But because Jesus had to go through all this suffering to fulfill the prophecy that we prophesied in Isaiah 53. I'm going to use Isaiah 53 as I say. Every step that Jesus took is to fulfill the scripture is to fulfill the scripture and so when Jesus came and laid his life at the cross sometimes you know because we don't have the right understanding we thought that it is a Roman soldier that crucified Jesus at the cross nobody can lay their hands or his hand on Jesus Jesus willingly go to the cross because the Bible said Jesus could have caught 10,000 of angels and destroyed everybody. But he, is, he willingly to fulfill the prophecy. The prophecy. So it is not the Roman soldier. It is God that willingly, Jesus willingly go to the cross. And it was prophesied 700 years ago before even the death of Jesus that prophet Isaiah accurately yes. prophesied the death of Jesus. So, many times we see a picture of three cross, three crosses. And when you see the whole, the, the, the conversation that they have at the cross, one of them died for, in his sin. Another one died with his sin forgiven. But Jesus died for the sin of the world. And so why? Why Jesus? Why Jesus need to die? It's for the atonement of sin and the reconciliation with God. It is called Emmanuel. So that, you know, through the reconciliation with God, that God can come and dwell among us. Yes. Emmanuel. So many people, they come to the cross, they think that it's just about salvation. And so they fulfill their religious obligation or responsibility. I come for Sunday service. No. 
It's not about Sunday service. It's not even about Bible study. All these are good. It's about your relationship with God. That's why Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. But how to have that relationship? How to have that relationship? Because at the cross, there's a divine exchange. By the death of Jesus Christ, sinners are made righteous. Enemies of God are made sons and daughters of God. The weak become strong from death to life. Why Jesus did to die? In order for us to understand, we have to go back all the way to the creation of God. God created you and I in the image of God. In the image of God and also with a purpose that in verse 28, God said, rise up and subdue the earth. God meant for all of us to be leaders, to be part of his creation. That's why we are uniquely, wonderfully made Created by God for the purpose. For the purpose. And so we know God created man in his own image to rule the creation. And God gave breath in uh, chapter 2, verse 7, that into man that they become living being. Chinese say, you learn, you link the horn, you link the, uh, yeah, uh, uh, human with a spirit. Okay? You link the uh, learn. And God said it is, it is good. And God said, God not only say it is not only say it is good. God have a wonderful relationship with Adam. Yes. Walking together in the garden, teaching Adam, guiding Adam. Adam is able to name all the animals and they were having a great time. But in chapter 3, we know something happened. The sin came to the picture that caused separation. Like we call SARS or COVID. Suddenly, there was a pandemic. Sin, pandemic, there's no cure. No cure. But yet, because of the love of God that created us, that God always is not about religion. God wants relationship. And that sin separated that relationship away. That we separate us away from that, from God, the presence of God. And that is where, as you read on, God has a redemptive plan. I understand separation, and some of us right now do understand what is separation all about, especially to SARS, to COVID in the beginning. That once your, your parents or your loved one is in critical condition, they lock them up in the isolation room up to the very last day. You can't even see them. After death, they just send them and burn them the type of separation. For me, I've been involved with drugs, uh, just like, you know, uh, uh, Dennis uh, and one of your members here right now is uh, Thomas. Yeah, so all of us, we, we know what is separation. Our parents love us, but our parents also know that there is a punishment that, my, that there is a punishment that will separate my son and me because of the law of the country. Because my son had took drugs, smuggled drugs, traffic drugs. And my son, not only separate, my son have to go through some caning because of traffic. They can feel it, even though they forgive, but yet they have to accept that punishment the punishment that caused separation. Mm. Likewise, how much about God? The sin come to the picture that break the heart of our Heavenly Father. Mm. And God wants to bring us back to that relationship. But God is gracious, is merciful, but God is a holy and righteous God. Yes. He had to stand by His word. Mm. And that is where, after chapter 3, God already planned 
But in the Old Testament, to forgive people their sins is that they had to sacrifice a lamb. Mm. Right? They had to sacrifice the lamb. And all this was throughout Old Testament. Mm. Even though there is separation, but God always provides the existent help to assist people. To assist his people. And sometimes they go wrong way. God mercy always brings them back. Because God has a redemptive plan. That on Good Friday, that not only they sacrifice lamb, he going to sacrifice his son as the lamb of God. And in John, he said that, look, when John saw Jesus, look, the lamb of God that come and save the world. And that is where we are today. And as I say, everything that God do is to fulfill his, uh, his word. Fulfill the scripture or the prophecy. So because of time, I'm not going to read everything. But Isaiah 53 talked about the Lamb of God. That, you know, he was quiet, silent, being led to be slaughtered. Mm. And in verse 7, he said that he was oppressed, afflicted, mm. yet did not open his mouth. Mm. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before the shearer is silent. Mm. And so, so he did not open his mouth. Mm. You see, God Jesus came to enter Jerusalem is to offer himself as a lamb to be sacrificed. And in verse 10 and 12, I want you all to hear this verse that, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him, cause him to suffer. Though the Lord makes his life an offering of sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. That, you know, after he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by the knowledge my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. He make himself as an offering. Sometimes we sing the song, right? That through his suffering, to his broken body, we are made whole. Yes. By the stripe of Jesus Christ, then we are able to receive healing. Yes. And so, as you read on, this verse says that, you know, as he bore the sin of many mm. and made intercession, intercession for the transgressors, yes. that verse in the Message Bible, he said he was beaten, tortured, verse 7 and 10, right? He was beaten, tortured, yet he didn't say a word, like a lamb taken to be slaughtered. Mm. So, right now we understand why Jesus did to die. Yes. Because in the Old Testament, in order for their sin to be forgiven, they have to offer a lamb that is faultless, spotless. Yes. And Jesus, Jesus died as a sinner, but Jesus never committed. A sin. He is spotless, he is sinless. But yet he is willing to die. And so John, John said that look, the Lamb of God, not only for the atonement of our sin, but give us eternal life. But the death of at the death of Jesus, we know, because by the blood of Jesus our sin is forgiven, we are able to reconcile back to God. So the pandemic, the sin pandemic, what happened? It causes everyone from that day born, they born as a sinner. And so Romans chapter 6, chapter 6, chapter 3, verse 23 says that all of us have sinned, fall short from the glory of God. Not only that, chapter 6, he says that, you know, for the wages of sin is death. So all of us, there is no cure for us because 
the sin, the sin pandemic, the sin disease will lead you and me to hell. There is no medicine, no atonement are able to save you and me. Only through the blood of Jesus. Only through that cross that Jesus sacrificed himself as the Lamb of God. That you and I can be reconciled back to the Lord. Then the question we, can, we want to ask is that, why not continue to provide animal? God in his divine plan is you want to go back to the or, original purpose is Emmanuel that God wants to walk with us, to eat with us, to be our God. To be our God. I think we have Ezekiel, right? He said, my dwelling place will be with them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Yes. Then the nation will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy and my sanctuary is among them forever. Amen. It go back to the original plan. Today at the cross, God wants to come and live in your life and among us so that we can enjoy what God has for you and me. So in order for us to go back Jesus had to die at the cross. So, where the presence of God, you not only find eternal life, the forgiveness of sin, you find that how good and wonderful God is. Because he, he is your, not only your Savior, not only your Lord, He is your loving Father. Loving Father. And that is where God wants us to go back to that relationship. So in 2 Corinthians, this verse, every one of us know that therefore in Christ we are new creation. Yes. Right? The old have gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them, he, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. And this is where it is so important. You look at Dennis, that's how he shared with you. The daughter reconciled, the parents also reconciled. I see many of them. Some of them, the father don't even come. I got one guy who went back to the mother. He was with us for one month. And after that, he went back. He said, Mom, he knocked at the door. You know, flat house, the wooden door, the, the grill door, right? The iron door, I bet. So the mom opened the, the wooden door and looked at him. So the mom asked, what do you want? He said, Mom, I want to tell you that I want to change. You know what the mom replied? The mom said, it is good that you want to change. I'm happy for you, but don't come back. Wow. But don't come back. But so I told him, you know, to cut the story short. I said, you got to continue. You know, buy present for her birthday and all. Send her letter, what are you doing at all? Cut the story short, after one year, Chinese this new year, he had to give the present to the brother to bring back. Every time, go to other country, buy thing, the brother bring back. So that day, the brother also cannot take it. Lah. The brother said that, ah, call the mom. He said, you know, in hockey, Atigo boy been here. Then the mom said, ask him himself bring up. When he bring up, right, the mom opened the door. The elder sister came out, hugged him, crying. And the mom said, come and join the reunion dinner. And from that day onward, every Saturday, Sunday, they never go back, the mom will call. What do you say to me like this? Praise the Lord. I, I, I boil herbal soup, you never come back and drink. Because why? 
In Malachi, God said that I shall turn the hearts of the father to the children, the heart of the children to the father. Because it's all about reconciliation. The cross is about our, our relationship with God and our relationship with people. Amen. And so you heard about daddy's testimony. I got a lot of all this testimony because even though those parents, they are fearful and all, at the very end, because of their transformed life, yes. new creation, God, people began to see the glory of God. God is able to reconcile. Let's give all the glory to the Lord. Amen. Okay, quickly. God also, you know, because Jesus died, so that the promise is the Holy Spirit that God will give us for victorious life. Because in the book of John, God said that if I don't live, the comforter won't come. And that is why Jesus has to die. Forgive us our sin. Cleanse our body, that our body become holy temple of God to prepare the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in our hearts. To come and dwell in our hearts. And so in Acts, one of the occasions, Jesus said that went in Jerusalem for the promise of my Father. And we all know this verse very well, you know, say that, you know, uh, Acts uh, chapter 1 verse 8, when the Spirit of God come upon you, you shall have what? Power. The type of power is not just, uh, just uh, what you call uh, political power or uh, people power. That power is the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that I'm going to talk about when I come on Sunday. Yes. And that power is to transform our life, is to help us to understand the truth because said the Holy Spirit comes, He will lead you into all truth. And when the, you know the truth, the truth set you free to live a life and life in abundance for the glory of God. Amen. And that is why it's so important. Jesus said that if I don't, then the Spirit of God will not come. I want to show you one verse that's so important that we have to have the relationship with God. Do you all know that this world is controlled by the evil one? In John chapter, chapter 5, verse 19, they say, we know that we are children of God, but the whole world is under the control of the evil one. But that doesn't say that the evil one created the world. Heaven and earth is created by God. Yeah. God gave the authority to Adam, but Adam lost the authority and gave it to the devil. Mm. That's why in the temptation, the devil said to Jesus, what is given to me, mm. I give it to you, if you bow down and worship me. Right. Who gave that to, to the devil? No, God never gave that to the devil. Mm. But it's just that this uh, Adam lost that. But we know right now, if we have the Holy Spirit, we have power. John 1, 4, 4 said that what? He said, uh, the spirit within us is stronger than the spirit of the world. That's right. And Galatians said that when we walk in the spirit, we will not gratify this sinful desire. Because the spirit of God is able to produce the fruits. And help us to operate the gift of the spirit. That we are able to be oaks of righteousness to display his splendor. And so God want the Holy Spirit that we dwell in the Holy Spirit that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, mind have not conceived that the Spirit of God can reveal it to us. Yes. So right now, as, a, as we know the meaning of Good Friday, and better still that Sunday you all come, that we know what Easter is all about. Then we are able to know that now it is God who made both of us stand firm in Christ, anointed us, set his steel of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our heart as a deposit, yes. guaranteeing what is to come. Yes. That we have the Holy Spirit that assure us that after this life, we will see the glory of God. Yes. So nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. And Ephesians, it talk about Ephesians chapter 1, verse uh, 13 and 14. And it said that, and you were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of salvation. When you believe, 
you will be marked with the seal. Likewise, the promise of the Holy Spirit. That is why it's so important. It's not just coming to church. It is walking in the Spirit of God and have the relationship with God. Have the relationship with God. In closing, Isaiah said that, you know, the broken body of God is for healing. He said, by his wound, or another person said, by the stripe of Jesus Christ, you will be healed. The blood of Jesus atoned our sin, but by the stripe of Jesus Christ, we receive healing. And I'll close with these two testimonies. One day I was going to preach at this uh, faith, uh, I think it's Faith Methodist Church. And in the morning, one of our brothers called me. He said, Pastor, this morning I pray. He said, you know, my, my brother Ivan is in, is in coma, right? I said, yeah, yeah, because he asked us to pray. 11 days in coma. And so he said, today I heard that the Holy Spirit asked me to call you to come and pray for my brother. I said, okay. So I went to preach two services, and by the time I ended, it's like 12 something. And I thought that, wow, very tired, man. Go back home and rest first. Huh? But then the brother texted me and said, are you coming? So I was with Dennis, I think, if I'm not wrong. And so both of us, I say, I said, Dennis, let's go for lunch, and then let's go to Tan Tok Sing. And when I went there, his brother was in this stage, 11-day coma. And so, so I asked the brother, I said, you know, close the curtain, and we began to sing that Jesus, we had thrown you. And then after that, I lay hand, we prayed. And when we lay hand, suddenly his body began to shake, and his eyes began to open. Like, his eyes, it's not open to see us, but like, so he's shaking. So, he opened his eyes, but I closed my eyes. I was praying and I began to pray in tongues and I said, God, you know, in my heart, I was thinking that, wow, miracle going to happen, man. And I began to pray and suddenly he stood up and he was, you know, was sit up and asking us what is happening. The nurse come in and every, you know, it's very chaotic. The nurse also don't know what is happening and then the doctor come and, wow, we were all so excited. You know? I said, what a miracle. And then I heard the curtain and I opened, and I opened my eyes, he's still sleeping. Because all those things happened in my mind. <laughs> it's just in my mind. Nothing happened. But the first part when he shakes something is real. After that, that is all in my mind. <laughs> and then the brother tell me, say, Pastor, when you pray, I heard God say, I will show my brother. I say, if this is what God said, then let's really continue to pray. So I get back to the ministry. I tell them, let's pray for Ivan. We begin to pray. Third day, because if nothing happened to him, they're going to you know, open up a hole that he can breathe or something like that. Third day, the brother called me. He said, there is some improvement. He said, there is some improvement. I say, let's pray, man. By the time evening, the brother wake up. And that Thursday, fourth day and fifth day, the brother is in this condition. Whoa. Praise the Lord. You know, I got a, this is a video by oh, RC. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hi, brothers. Oh, uh, thank you for, yeah. I'm Ivan. Thank you for praying for me. God bless you all. Amen. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. But many times we tell people of the miracle of Jesus Christ healing. In the world, sometimes people say, lucky. La. It's coincidence. La. But how about this one? After one week, another couple from, from Batam called me. The son was four days in coma. And then in the ICU room, they were praying, and then they heard the Holy Spirit say, call Pastor Don. 
So they called me. Then he told me that the son was in coma for four days. And then I say, okay, come, let's video. So we have video call. I say, come, go. you are in the hospital. Let's go in the ICU. And we pray. And we pray. And then I heard, because the, the father was telling me they want to send him to, to Johor. I heard the Lord say, tell the father not to send him to Johor. I will heal his son. Sometimes you hear from God, uh, you also must have faith, you know. <laughs> Easy to say, uh, we know healing how. <laughs> so, your life must be close with God. Yeah. You know it's from God, God will give you the faith to speak. Mm -hmm. God will give you the boldness to speak. Yes. Because God is big enough to stand by his word. Mm -hmm. If you hear from God. And so I tell the father, I say, you don't send him because he said tomorrow we're going to say. I said don't say him because God said that he was healed. Second day, suddenly they called me, right? I got a video of, is this the video? No, this one. Is it this one the video? No. Ah. Right hand mana right hand? Coba goyang right hand. Kanan, tangan kanan. Hah? Tangan kanan. Goyang. Angkat dikit. Angkat dikit. Just wait. Okay. Hello, hello. Tangan kiri mana? Oh itu tangan kiri. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Kaki kaki kiri mana? Coba kaki kiri. Oke. Okay. Kaki kanan? Oh ya, kaki kanan. The father was so excited. Show me a video. But right now, the son was so healthy. And right now the family. So in closing, we got to have the right perspective why Jesus did to die. And Sunday when we come, why are you weeping? Jesus asked Mary, we should be rejoicing because the empty tomb, Jesus is alive. Jesus has risen. But Mary thought that someone had stolen the body. That's why you are crying. Instead of rejoicing, we are crying. And this is where it's so important. Today, some of you here, if you can't assure yourself that if anything happened to me tomorrow, where will I go? Eternity, there's only two places, heaven or hell. And God has died at the cross so that you and I can receive salvation and reconcile back to God. And some of you have been living a Christian life for many years. Why there is no power? Because we take Christianity as a religion. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. God go all the way for you, for me. Die at the cross, bleeding six hours to death. Not for what he done wrong, but for your sin and my sin. That we are able to come back. Whatever problem that you have, if God can heal people 11 days, 4 days of coma, nothing God cannot do. All things are possible in the sight of God.